How's it going everyone? Hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the hmm, long-awaited armor angling guide, which I did promise quite a while ago. Now, today, we are joined with Alex, who has helped me out, so thank you very much. And we are going to demonstrate the armor angling and how to armor angle and how to side scrape, more importantly. For this, we are going to be using an E100 as an example because the turret is very, very flat. So it's much easier to actually demonstrate what exactly the penetration or how it differs as we go through different angles. As well as that, we do have the armor pen indicator down the bottom, as you can see right here below the reticle. The first one is going to be your penetration. So in this case, if we are using the uh, AP rounds, it has 252 millimeters of pen. And if we switch to AP, or sorry, heat, then it will go to 340. So that is the first number. And then the second number is the effective pen that it will have. As you can see, because of this angle, never going to pen. You have a 0% chance of penning. But if we go around to the front, we're going to need about 300 pen with AP to go through this turret face or the cheeks of the tank. So as you can see, as we are moving, if we go more to the right, you can see that the angle of the effective armor goes all the way up and we're nearly at, well, 400 now, 430, 440. You're never going to pen it. If you have if you have heat on the other hand, then of course this becomes a lot easier to pen. Notice though that the penetration on the right actually went up as we changed the heat rounds. This is because there is zero normalization on heat as well as HE. Now speaking about normalization, Normalization is what happens with the shell once it hits the tank and the actual angle that it can normalize to make the penetration capable. AP rounds have five degrees of normalization, APCR have two degrees, and heat and HE have zero. Meaning that it doesn't really matter too much about the angle that you hit at with AP. APCR, yeah, it's going to get a little bit dodgy, and heat really, really hates being shot at ridiculous angles and it just won't pen half the time. As you can see, unless you have a lot of pen, uh, you need about 1,417 to go through that. Now the armor angling and the armor, effective armor is gonna always change no matter what part you're shooting on the tank. It could be the lower plate, as you can see here, we have AP rounds and they're gonna go straight through the lower plate because it's only 219 millimeters thick. However, if we were trying to shoot it at this type of angle, in the exactly same place, we didn't penetrate their armor. there's no pen because you need 320 millimeters of pen to go through that. Now, the way that this can actually be beneficial to you and then knowing about the actual armor angling in this game and how to angle effectively is that when you're on a corner, let's imagine that I cannot see the front of this all the way down this track wheel and I'll have something to like block it off on the actual editing. And we will move on to kind of a realistic scenario on a corner in a little bit. But the way that you can do this is that if there's nothing here, the only way that I can pen him is to shoot this tiny little spot here. Whereas nothing along here I can pen, you can, you can shoot here and don't get fooled because this says 114, but if you shoot it, you're doing critical damage to the tracks. You're not actually penning the tank. And a lot of that is going to be similar for a lot of tanks. So the tracks can actually absorb quite a lot of the shells and you can bait a lot of shots into the tracks. Especially with heat rounds, heat rounds do not like passing through other objects. It will eventually go through for a little bit if the armor is small enough, but if you hit something like the tracks, usually it will just get absorbed by it. Unless you can hit on a very, very flush uh, corner of the track where you can actually do damage. So for example, right here, there is a chance that I can go through the track and do damage. And we need about 340 millimeters of penetration or even 300 here. We can then shoot, we can do damage and go through the tracks. However, you will never be able to go through like this. It just won't happen. However, with AP, you can go through no problem. And because Alex is using HP boost, it's going to require two shots to actually track him. Do not get fooled and do not get baited into shooting the tracks. And just because AP can go through it, you'll notice because of the angle of the armor, it's not always easy for AP to just go through and do damage. You're going to need to have a very good angle like this, for example. But as soon as we go to try and shoot the exact same spot, which is about there, 
we're going to need a lot more pen to go through the tracks as well and do damage. Okay, so now Alex has moved into a spot where this is kind of perfect size scraping, right? There is a chance that we can do damage here, but it's very, very small. And even then, it's only going to hit the tracks realistically. Um, it's going to be very hard and you're going to need a lot of pen with AP or APCR to actually go through and do damage from the tracks as well. So no matter what I'm trying to do, you know, I can't, can't do anything ricochet. As you can see, the armor pen, I mean, yes, it says here that it's a hundred, you know, chance, but that's, I'm pretty certain that's only to do, yeah, it's only to do tracking damage. So this armor pen, although yes, it is useful, don't rely on it too much. And especially the little reticle where it actually shows if you can pen or not, also don't rely on that too much. The best thing that you can do is actually go to tanks.gg, uh, the website, and actually look at all the armor models of the tanks and learn about what you can pen, what you can't pen, how they are when they're angled and whatnot. But if we do fire heat, then yes, there is a chance that we can go through him right here. But if he's angled like this, you know, that's a very tiny, tiny shot. So all that he has to do realistically is just sit there like this. And this isn't the perfect angle, but um, it's fine for the demonstration because you can actually angle the E100 turret so that he's facing a little bit more to his right. Um, and then you just cannot pen it at all. Unless, of course, you go up the top here. But it doesn't matter. Like, this is perfect side scraping against someone that is like this. Because no matter what shell you're firing, you cannot pen. Okay, hang on. I'm kind of interested about this. Well, there you go. This is actually just uh, the track pen. I was interested to see whether or not I could pen this, but there you go. I'm getting baited by the armor pen again. Even in this video, I'm getting baited by it. So it's not always the best to rely on this. Now, what to do in this situation where someone is angling an E100, for example, and this goes exactly the same for the mouse as well. First, you're probably going to want to fire heat because realistically it's a super heavy, it's going to have armor, um, it's going to be a problem to deal with unless you do have very, very good standard rounds. But once they face you like this to actually take the shot at you, then you can put one into them. Usually, it will go straight through the turret cheek with heat rounds. And as soon as they then angle back around, then you just wait, or you try and get around them once they've fired, if you can. Um, it's a little bit of a struggle because no matter what kind of... This is the kind of perfect angle that I was showing before as well, because no matter where you go, like this is 400 millimeters thick, and, you know, look at that. You're going to need a lot of heat pen to actually go through this. And, e and if you have APCR, then, yeah, sure, you can pen it, um, but you're going to need a lot to actually go through that. Um, and always the little T-bar at the top here is pretty much always penable. Um, so keep that in mind. But that's more to do with the E100. Now, the best way to deal with someone that is side scraping against you is to actually side scrape yourself. And if you are in a tank that can do it, obviously, if you're in a medium tank with paper armor, then no, but this doesn't really apply to you. To side scrape effectively, you want to know first what your side armor is on your tank. Because there is no point of trying to side scrape if your side armor can just be overmatched by pretty much anything. What I mean by this is that the 430U does have good side armor, but over angled a little bit and it will go straight through. So if I'm angled like this against an E100, because he's taller than me as well, he can actually overmatch the hull and my engine deck. Um, overmatching obviously comes into play when the caliber is three times the thickness of the armor so if the armor is 30 millimeters thick on the upper engine deck for example let's say that this bit here my actual engine deck is 30 millimeters thick if you times that by three you get 90 so anything that is 90 millimeters 0.1 will overmatch this engine deck so no matter what the angle is if i'm firing ap at it or apcr it will overmatch that engine deck which is why STRVs are very, very annoying to deal with if you do not have a 122 or higher gun. But I think that's pretty much everything that is covered in side scraping. The main takeaways, obviously, keep your armor angled and try and present kind of the angled flat side 
of your tank. Make sure that you look up your tank beforehand in Tanks GG to find out exactly where are the weak spots and if you can side scrape because there's no point side scraping in something that can get easily penetrated in the side. For example, the new 780, if you if you side scrape, it actually becomes a bit worse. You can actually get penned basically with 250 pen right in the front. So you need to take that in consideration and learn how to side scrape effectively in your tank. For tanks like the AE Phase 1, it actually has a little bit of a bulge over the right hand side and the left hand side in the middle of the tank. So you can actually pen that as it's side scraping. So you need to be careful with what tanks you are side scraping in and understand your tank's armor layout. Once you know that, then you can start to learn where and how much you can overangle and side scrape your tank. With tanks like the IS-4, you can overangle so much to be able to side scrape um, because it has really, really, really good side armor. So keep that in mind, N learn your tank and then put it into practice. It's going to take a while to master, but you'll get there eventually. And lastly, always try and turn your turret away from them, especially in the E100 and the mouse, if they are, if you are on reload. So as soon as you're taking your shot, move your turret away. Um, and the 430, it doesn't really matter too much um, because it's pretty well uh, rounded with the actual armor thickness um, around the tank. But for tanks that are very, very flat, like the E100 on the side, you need to make sure that you're turning away and presenting the best angle possible uh, to bounce for your target. So hopefully that was helpful and hopefully you now get a better understanding of what side scraping is and what armor angling you can do in the game. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy you not to do, I'll see you all in the next video.